Uh, okay, so good evening, everyone. So once again, once again, welcome back to all our uh, members. Today we have Dr. Suraj again with us to, to clear all your doubts and uh, any confusions, especially regarding a uh, new RGHS rule. Some um, they have come with a new rule, how to write the examination and all. So Suraj will be uh, explaining and enlightening us about that how to write the exam. Uh, so how to write the, the in that pattern. And uh, any other doubts you have, you can uh, write in chat box. We'll uh, take up one and one and uh, next uh, one by one issues, and we'll just try to discuss. We'll also be telling some uh, memory techniques, how to remember things and all. So another forty-five minutes. Okay, we can have this discussion. Can you please, Suraj? Can you please uh, tell us about uh, the new yeah. RQHS pattern to write the theory examination and how to do that? Yeah, actually, I, I would like to discuss about that also. Before uh, coming to that, some of the questions which were uh, put yesterday and which could not be discussed, I'll just go through. Uh, I'll just go through those ones. Like whatever is, in my opinion, what is best. Okay. So after that, if uh, some of the questions are already solved, then they, that they'll get the answer for those questions. And uh, after that, whichever questions are coming in the chat box, uh, you can just make a note of those questions. One by one, we'll discuss about that. Okay. I'll discuss about the new pattern of RGHS also okay. along with this. Okay, Kishan. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, one of the questions yesterday was uh, how to revise and uh, remember with maximum efficiency. So, what I feel is whenever you read any chapter, so after finishing one particular topic, you can just sit for some time, maybe some 10 minutes or 15 minutes and recall whatever you have read in that particular topic. Try to recall as much as possible. Then proceed with the next topic. Instead of just reading all the topic one after the other continuously, so after each particular topic, if you are able to just spend some time, maybe 10 or 15 minutes and if you recall for whatever possible uh, among the points which I've read. So that will help you in uh, remembering it for a longer time. So, uh, and one more thing, okay, whenever you make a timetable, so one more person had asked, like, if you, if you keep a very strict timetable and very tight schedule, it is difficult to follow that. And what will happen is usually commonly what I have observed in between, there will be some function or some relatives will uh, come. So whatever you will tend to lose track of your timetable. So whenever you're preparing a timetable itself for every week, you can keep one day as buffering day. So the schedule will be for that one week, but one day you will have a buffering day to compensate for whatever you have lost in, in between those few days. So in that way, you can, you, you'll be able to catch up with the timetable, whatever you have prepared. And uh, whenever you're reading for the first time, for that is for the first reading. So don't keep any very strict uh, time frame for reading for the first time, because sometimes what happens, some to topics are really very difficult to understand. So you will try, you will tend to spend more time for that particular topic. So for the first time, whenever you're reading a new topic, there should not be any strict time frame for that. So take your own time, understand, and then proceed with the uh, next topic. Uh, Kishan, are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, clearly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I'm clear. getting message in the chat box telling that there is some, uh, they're not able to hear or something. Is my voice clear? Yeah. So it's a uh, little bit breaking, but that's okay. We can manage. Yeah, yeah, it's audible, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So next thing I want to tell you is, yeah, uh, for the first time when you're reading, have a don't have a very strict time frame. Read it le uh, leisurely, and then you have to understand the topic. Then proceed with the next topic. When you are revising, have a strict time frame for revision. For revision, there's no time to have your own sweet time for revision. Okay. And uh, one more point. Uh, for some topics, you can have something like what you call as a prototype uh, format or a prototype diagram, which will be helpful for many questions which are coming on the same topic. Uh, for example, uh, I can tell you in pharmacology, you know, you can have one prototype drug which will have the characteristics for so many other questions pertaining to that family of uh, drugs like that. So if at all you are thorough with one prototype uh, characteristics, that will hold good for many questions and you can use the same uh, diagram or same uh, content for the other questions also. And uh, whenever you are reading, always have either a pen or a highlighter with you and uh, try to make points when uh, in the textbook whenever you are reading. So it should, and better don't use too many colors in the textbook. I've seen some people, they use some 10, 12 colors and the whole textbook will be colorful and uh, finally you won't know what is important, what is not important. Or even if they're highlighting, they tend to highlight each and every line or underline all the lines in the given paragraph. That is of no use. 
uh, it won't benefit you in any way whenever you are revising. So try to make points, underline only those which are very important. Because otherwise, if you keep on highlighting each and every line, each and every word, there's no point in using a highlighter at all. And uh, even when you're writing an exam, what is important is the examiners, they search for the keywords which are there in the answer. So if at all the keywords which are present in the answer, you tend to get more marks. So even if you write the same content, but if you just beat around the bush and elaborate in essay type, you will tend to get lesser marks than that. So always try to make it concise with all the subheadings and underline the keywords and that will help you to score more marks. And uh, see, small mistakes in the exam, they're acceptable. You are, even everyone tends to make small mistakes, but blunders are not acceptable. So always be cautious not to make blunders. Small mistakes, it's okay, no problem. And uh, uh, one more thing, yeah, regarding the sleep, one of them had asked regarding the sleep. Uh, some points which you must remember is that's what yesterday only I had stressed. Minimum six hours of sleep is definitely a must. Whether your exam is still far away and especially the night before the exam, minimum of six hours sleep is compulsory. And along with that, hey, you so can also... tell them why. Why yeah, sleep is important. In... Yes, yes, it helps in uh, storing. How the mobile work? Processing of uh, content, it takes time. Brain takes yes. time. Okay, yes, this is yes, just yes. reading it, just input and process the information and collect the uh, things. Brain takes time. So if, unless you give some time for that or some rest for brain, this will not be stored in our brain. That's why we read everything, but we don't remember anything. That's because we are not given enough time to, uh, what to say, processing and uh, what to say, rest uh, storing of the information. Only input, input, input. That's why this is the problem. So sleep is very essential. If you study for six hours, uh, six hours of rest is equally important. Next. Yeah. And uh, along with that, one more thing uh, in the afternoon, some people say they feel very sleepy in the afternoon. Should I uh, sleep? Can I take a small amount of sleep in the afternoon or should I continuously read during the daytime? Yes, there are um, uh, studies which have proven that a half an hour of a power nap in the afternoon is definitely beneficial. But that doesn't mean that you can sleep for hours together in the afternoon. So just a small half an hour to one hour power nap in the afternoon is okay. You can, that will also help you boost your efficiency. Okay. And you should have the same sleep pattern. Like one day you sleep from 12 to 6, another day you keep awake till 3 o'clock, next day you sleep at 10 o'clock. That is definitely harmful. So have a standard sleep pattern. Half an hour here and there is okay. But otherwise, the overall time should be approximately the same. So that helps you to regulate your biological clock also. And if at all you regularly sleep in the same time, you need not keep an alarm. Your body will automatically make you awake during the uh, same time each day. And uh, one more question I had got regarding group discussions. Is group discussions helpful or not? Or should we do it? Uh, many people, if you are staying in the hostel, yeah, I know whenever you go to have tea or whenever you are going to have dinner, you have a lot of friends you meet up. For group discussion, what I would like to say is it is beneficial only if the group consists of like-minded people. So what I would say is, you can say there is a frequency. Each person has a frequency. And people with similar frequency, if they do group discussion, is definitely beneficial. And it should be in a small number. Two, three people, four people is fine. If 10 people sit together, all they do is they chit chat and then waste most of the time. So if too many people are there, group discussion is not helpful that time. In a small group with like-minded people, yeah, it is beneficial. And uh, one more thing, okay, whenever... I'm giving an example, uh, if you are a hostelite and if you are meeting for uh, uh, evening uh, tea or snacks or something. So what you can discuss is whatever has happened during the day, like uh, what your consultants have done, or some mistakes which would have happened and which you say, okay, this happened in my unit like this. So what happens whenever you discuss that, you will tend to prevent that other people from doing the same mistake once again. So obviously everyone does mistakes and discussion of these common mistakes, you know, that will help you to remember that even later in the exam also. And every day you have a, obviously you have to study every day. Don't postpone your study till the last month when there is one month left for the exam or two months left for the exam. That will be too much stressful and definitely you cannot come in the top if you are postponing it till the end. So you should start well in advance and every day study is very important. Have a fixed number of hours for studying every day. Uh, maybe uh, during the time when you are having college from morning till evening. You can have approximately a four hours of study or maybe three to four hours. That is sufficient. But every day study is definitely important. And uh, if at all you watch a movie or something, try to compensate that from your leisure time. For example, you spend one or two hours watching some movie. So whichever leisure time you are having, try to compensate that the same amount of time. But however, keep in mind that every day you need to study. 
that's how you will be successful you will tend to come in the top and uh, obviously it never cut short from your sleep time sleep is 100% essential even if you have wasted a little time don't cut short that time from your sleep and many people they tend to have these hobbies some people play sports some people have music or dance as their passion so that should definitely be there everyone knows all work and no play is makes jack a dull boy so it's not that always just because you have joined mbbs you have to sit and study 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 all the time that is definitely not the way you need to have your leisure time you need to follow your passions and uh, kishan would have already told you <laughs> or even in sports or uh, uh, you have to definitely uh, follow your passion and then along with that you have to maintain your studies okay and then uh, yeah now coming to your rghs pattern the uh, kishan had told yesterday while many people had asked regarding that there is a new pattern now so each and every question has a dedicated number of pages and uh, the same order like 1 2 3 4 5 in that same order you need to answer so one of them had asked me is it beneficial or is it not beneficial this pattern uh, obviously it is beneficial for the examiner it is not beneficial for the student so why they change this pattern is because for the correction to be more convenient and more easier so they have made this pattern so the thing what i would like to tell is whenever you are answering the first one or two questions three questions are very crucial try to put in your whole mindset and then try to uh, write these questions as neatly as possible because this will create an impression for the examiner for correcting your whole paper the first one or two questions if you have written very shabbily and written some irrelevant things in your answer that will have an impact on your whole paper no doubt if you have written the ninth or tenth question perfectly that won't matter you will definitely get lesser marks so and one more thing any question for that matter when you are answering any question all okay even if you don't know anything about the question something which is related to the question or something which is relevant if you answer it's fine but never write some totally irrelevant nonsense things in the answer because if the examiner reads that and thinks that okay this fellow doesn't know anything about the subject he writes only nonsense so that will have an impact and you lose marks out of the questions which have actually answered correctly and well as well so never never ever write total irrelevant nonsense things in your answer that will not fetch you anything some people will tell okay i need to fill at least one page so i am writing some nonsense thing that won't help you okay if it is relevant but not so precise also that is fine if you write you, you might not get very good marks but some average marks you will get but don't write irrelevant things and when you are answering the answer paper for example if you divide the answer paper into two parts first first five questions and next five questions like that so the first half of the paper you should write it in about 1 hour 40 minutes and the next half of the paper in about 1 hour 20 minutes so that is because uh, the same the same uh, reason as i told you the initial impression what the examiner gets that will carry or carry forward to the entire paper and uh, so that is why you spend a little more time during the first half no problem but it should not be too much after every question keep checking the time how much you have consumed how much time is left there should not be too much of a gross difference between these two so that is important time management is very important someone asking you is it uh, important to complete the entire booklet not necessarily pass. sometimes sometimes what happens the questions would have come such that uh, even if you write everything whatever you know regarding that question you will still leave one or two pages so if it's uh, fine you fill it but if it's not fine don't worry or don't uh, get anxious or uh, afraid that okay i have left one page blank and uh, i might not get full marks nothing like that nothing to worry if that question is such that it there is only a little bit of thing which you can answer then it's okay no problem so for example uh, sometimes uh, kishan uh, in pg exam also there will be questions like enumerate the factors for 10 marks obviously you can't fill five pages for that so that will get over in two or maximum three pages but we can't help sometimes questions are like that so and sometimes questions are very big wherein even five pages are not sufficient for writing that answer so it's okay that one uh, you need to know how to concise the answer as well as how to elaborate that technique you need to develop while answering the questions because many times even a 10 mark question can be asked for 3 marks or a 3 mark question can be asked for 10 marks it does happen rare rarely i'm not telling frequently but rarely it can happen but i want to touch it... upon a very important aspect uh, for students yeah. it's uh, how to uh, control the anxiety or fear okay hmm. or uh, stress during a uh, examination or any any time for that matter the best uh, method yeah so yeah. sure, i'll ask your opinion as well one one yes. thing i want to tell is mm-hmm. why usually students get anxious or tense because of only because it's not because they are not studied or it's not like they are not prepared well the main thing is they are more worried about the unnecessary things see yes. always we should worry about the things which are in our hands 
not about which are not in our hands for example many are the evening coffee discussion would be uh, who will be the our examiner or uh, which question will come where will be the our exam center and uh, what time we will have the exam these are the none of our concern and it's not at all in our hands then what's yes. the point in worrying about them or talk not even talking about them how does that matter who is the examiner or what are the uh, questions asked it's not at all in our hand by worrying we can't change them the uh, examiner will not feel pity oh he has wasted two days just worrying about the who is the examiner so he won't give any great bonus marks so worry about what is there in our hands what is there yes. in our hands is only one thing what is that study as much as possible as much as you can and revise as uh, as repeatedly as possible that's the only thing so worry more about that instead of so many other things okay and someone asked how much time to study for neat preparation see that again depends on individual see sure student like suraj he is a quick grasper once in listening to the class he will grasp most of the things and once he picks up okay Oh, understand the same part. Your voice time. is not audible. Can you repeat the last part once again? Your voice was breaking in the last uh, part, Kishan. Oh, you are muted. Yeah. Is it audible now? Yes, yes, clear, clear. Yeah. Only the last uh, few, se few yeah. seconds. Yeah. 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 Ye
how to prepare for a pg entrance exam during mbbs yes sir see nowadays do... what has happened this is a trend this is a bad trend yes. suraj i would say mm. okay most of the, and uh, i would i won't recommend any coaching classes anything like uh, yes. many ask me which one to go for i won't self study okay uh, mm. you may go but now the trend is uh, bad trend has started first year you join the college and the same evening you go to a, some coaching institute and join there okay <laughs> and you won't attend the classes nothing like you don't study all that coaching materials you study and uh, this is the you are not uh, concerned about like you are not concerned about clearing your mbbs the day you joined mbbs you are only thinking about getting a pg seat what is that yes see the thing is as you said it's a very bad trend obviously nobody will recommend from the first year Uh, even i will never not say okay study for your pg entrance exam that's a very bad thing to do so first year second year you need to first get uh, adjusted with the medical subjects they are all everything is new anatomy is new physiology pathology everything is so new so you need to get adjusted you need to study voluminous subjects so uh, obviously i won't recommend you to start studying for pg from first year or second year that is a very bad trend which is developing now but we can't help because of the race which is going on uh, many people After are all, doing that suraj tell me hmm. Hmm. after all what's asked in pg entrance exam is it some sociology or economics asked or the same subjects what we studied in uh, study in uh, mbbs asked there definitely the same subjects studied in mbbs the only difference is they tend to ask more things which are rare or things which are out of the box and which in mbbs the common things which you have studied are less frequently asked in uh, need in need what they do is they try to pick up the areas which are not studied so much in mbbs which you would have either skipped or which you would have not concentrated so much in mbbs so that is the thing people feel that uh, the pass need exam they are asking a lot of difficult questions or a lot of out of the box questions so whatever you have studied the same thing only is asked but the areas which are selected are little different from the theory exam that's all that is the main difference if, and uh, your previous question study a study a topic and simultaneously solve mcqs how about if, that suraj if if the if the student is able to cope up with all the subjects with all the theory and mcqs very good that's a very good approach but most of the times practically it is not possible to study theory mcqs of all the chapters all the subjects in one year so If if at all the student has that capacity, some are extraordinarily gifted. Uh, like even our uh, Kishan, I don't know how you studied, but uh, uh, like if you are able to do that, it's very really good. But uh, <laughs> if if you are able to do that, it's very you good. Know. But uh, most of the times, practically, it's not possible. Uh, I will tell you my own experience. Even I started preparing for my NEET only after my internship, but that is actually a little late. What I would like to recommend is even when you are in final year or when you are in the beginning of internship. start preparing for your pg need that's very good you will have a lot of time so and obviously when you are you're near in second year or third year studying each and every subject along with the mcqs is a little bit difficult but if you are able to do it that's well and good i mean it's it's the ultimate because by the time you finish your final mbbs you are already well prepared for attending need uh for memory i would give two tips i would like to give two tips for memory what i used to do okay the especially to write in exam and remember in exam also one thing one technique is called numbering technique okay numbering technique second thing is imagining technique what is numbering technique is uh, for example uh, i am reading uh, say one uh, give an example infective endocarditis i am reading infective endocarditis in medicine what i do uh, read first line maybe definition okay in the definition one or two key words will be there one or two words will be there discussion your voice is breaking kishan your voice is not audible now now yeah now it's clear now it's clear yeah continue okay oh, numbering technique i was telling is it clear now now you can do one thing you can try uh, disabling the video and uh, speaking will it be more clear yeah 
now now is it clear yeah, now it's very clear now your voice is very clear oh, wonderful thank you so yeah. numbering technique so in front of pathogenesis uh, highlight the two important words and give number as 3 like that make 10 points 1 2 3 4 5 for 10 marker make 10 points like that underlying the only the key words so what happens is like that all the important questions you read and highlight and give the numbering so what happens is you revise you need not go again in entirely only the key words whatever you highlighted and given numbers you can revise so it will hardly take one less than one minute to revise one topic so in the previous day of the exam and what the importance of giving numbering is in the exam hall when you sit to write ex- uh, answer to remember in the sequence as well the number one okay that was a definition in that whatever was highlighted word was there that you write first that's what expect in the exam the key word that you should write first similarly that sequence also will be remembered you need not worry what to write next how to write next what i missed so you that in sequence 10 points you need to be written in the when they ask exam you should write those 10 keywords then make make frame a sentence out of a word okay that's the one way uh, to study second thing is uh, second uh, is imagining technique what i used to do to how to remember a concept when a concept is difficult to remember i used to use method suraj you please continue i will i'll log in with another device yes 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 okay okay you please continue so, yeah I, one of them had asked a question regarding making notes so what point i would like to tell you is whenever you are making notes uh, first thing you have to read a topic you have to read a subject understand the topic very well then you start making notes the more that's the time when you it will enter into your uh, deep mind and you'll able you'll be able to remember it for a long time some people i have seen the moment they start reading they start making notes and after each and every point they read they make notes finally nothing would have entered their head only they are just reading and making notes so that's not beneficial whenever you want to make notes first you uh, read everything understand then make notes that will definitely be beneficial and it will be helpful for your uh, final exam also and uh, one more person had asked how to make big answers concise okay so sometimes you will be getting a question a five mark question or maybe a three mark question which is very huge so that time what you can do you can classify the question under each subheading just write one or two which are most important points for example okay etiology whichever is the first and the second most important etiology that one you mention or clinical features whichever is the most important clinical feature that one you mention first and then uh, proceed no need to mention each and every point in each and every subheading fully so in that way you can concise the answer and then present it like a three marker or a five marker and i got one more question regarding how to remember the big tables and the classifications so as you all know the standard technique for remembering this is write down that in a piece of paper whatever classification or whatever the tables are there and that one you stick it on in front of your study table or whichever place which you pass every day so in that way whenever you pass you can just have a look at that and that will help in building a a graphical memory so you'll be you'll tend to remember that more frequently always keep having a look regarding the tough table that, that's the best method to study different classifications and tables and uh, suraj is it audible now uh, yeah now now it's better you know it's better yeah someone asked uh, especially pgs how should they prepare during the last month of the before the examination yes yes it's very Whenever crucial exam- no? yes very yeah. good question whenever your exams are nearing whenever in your when you are in your last month of your preparation for your final exam never never read new subjects new topics we never read new books whatever you have read till then just read the same thing once again some people they start taking up new books new topics new subjects and then reading in the last one month that is definitely not beneficial it will make you more stressful and uh, more difficult to remember whatever you have already read also so whenever you are nearing your exams always read only the ones which have already read till then and to be able to do that the best solution would be to start early start well in advance so that you will have a lot of time for revision and then uh, that won't be a constraining factor and uh, especially for your practical exams few things you keep in mind always common things first so in any disease an uncommon presentation of a common illness is more common than a common presentation of an uncommon disease 
so this one you will be very well knowing so always whenever you are making a diagnosis also the common diagnosis always should be thought of first whenever you make a rare diagnosis you will rarely be correct and uh, uh, someone sure the clinical uh, someone has this habit of uh, if they get interested in one topic they start doing phd in that okay they read it uh, enormously about one topic and uh, okay what to, how to how to how can we control that in that always keep a time frame for example how can we stick to ourselves yes 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 you have to keep a time frame stick to it just because you like one topic you can't spend days together reading the same topic you will tend to lose out on the other important topics so whichever it is whichever in, however interesting one topic is always keep a time frame and stick to the time frame whatever it is you have to read only in those days then proceed to the next topic no matter what whether it is boring whether it is interesting do not spend too much of time on the same thing okay and uh, i was telling you about your uh, some, some people have this uh, depression okay some people uh, not studied for some few days and uh, in that uh, hangover only oh i not studied for 3 days in that hangover they tend to lose some more days just thinking about that they have lost few days they continue to be in the same state of mind how can they come over uh, from that state of mind and start studying and keep yeah. themselves motivated every time Yes, you know one reason what, for what reason what factor was what factor keep you motivated all the time to study? Yeah, so one thing why people go into that mindset or that depressive mindset is they start comparing themselves with their colleagues. Like any of your other friend is already has studied so much, he has finished this book, he has finished revising this topic. I have not at all studied. That is one of the main reasons for people going into depression. So what I would like to tell you is, especially when your exams are very much near, never compare yourself with others. You always compare yourself with yourself what you had read the previous day. I had read so much the previous day. Now I have read so much. That's all. Yeah. And even if you meet your friend, you can just have a casual cup of tea. You can speak for five minutes casually, but never compare. Okay, how much you have read? How many topics have you finished? Have you started revising this book? Because one thing, some people are there just to scare you. So they they unnecessarily tell you, yeah, I've already finished reading this book. Yeah. I've finished studying. I've finished revising once. Well, so, that, uh... <laughs> so yeah. uh, what i would like to tell is never compare yourself with others everybody has a different time frame like for one person he might finish one book in 5 days one person might take around 100 days to finish the same book everyone's mindset or capacity or efficiency is not the same so never compare yourself with others uh, because uh, i've seen some people they might tell you oh this uh, chapter it is very difficult you will need at least 10 days to finish this chapter so what will happen the moment before, even before you start reading that chapter your mind tells you okay this is a very difficult chapter i require 10 days or more to study this chapter so even if you are able to finish that in one or two days you won't be able to read because of your mindset so uh, what i would like to tell whenever you especially when you are close to the exam never compare yourself with your friends as much if if at all somebody is having a negative attitude try to avoid them during that time so even if they themselves start speaking about uh, any chapter exactly. or any topic which exactly. they are reading tell no i'm not interested i'll continue with my own timetable my own way of reading so that is the main reason you should that is the main cause for uh, this depression wonderful wonderful source yes sometimes sometimes okay you are already Wonderful. in a depressive mindset some you know when that will happen when you when you are continuously reading for one month one and a half months especially for pgs i'm telling you especially for pgs so everyone tends to go into that exhaustive mindset they are totally exhausted even if they take sleep for 8 hours 10 hours they are still tired they are not able to study efficiently they are not able to read even 25 30 pages per day also that is they are totally exhausted so what to do that time so best thing during that time is okay a short break you can say okay when you are continuously read for one month without any break without any uh, any other thing okay take a short break okay uh, you can watch a movie with your friends or uh, you can go for some 2 3 hours you can just speak uh, go to your relatives place or something and that will actually that will take your mind away from all these uh, stressful factors and it's okay even if you have wasted some 3 4 hours for that particular thing after that your efficiency will be so much boosted that you can um, uh, compensate that much more than what you would have done if you have continued studying for hours together even then so if at all you are, uh, if you are totally exhausted so or i have read the topic yeah i have read something i not i am not understanding even after repeated uh, studying i am not understanding one concept or understanding or something what can i do 
yeah uh, if at all you have a topic which is uh, sometimes some topics are really difficult to understand so try to make notes try to make some points point wise you make notes and then try to teach it to someone else catch out of your friend you tell okay i've read this one topic just wait for two minutes i'll just teach you this thing this topic to you so by when you are teaching someone else you have one topic you will definitely retain that for a very long time so uh, sometimes that, that will help you in uh, remembering but to yes. understand hmm. that will help in remembering you are right yes. but uh, how yes. can we understand better by watching any videos or any uh, graphical this any any way, any way yeah by watching videos by watching someone else's lecture on the topic you can but don't waste too much time during your exam time sometimes what happens is just there is only one month left for the exam somebody feels okay i'm not able to understand this one particular topic in during that time don't waste your time seeing other videos lectures reading some standard textbooks and uh, trying to understand that that in that time frame it won't help so during that time in the last few days of your exam if some one particular topic you are not able to understand properly what you can do is just jot down some important points regarding that topic and okay if at all this question comes in the exam i am going to answer this 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 point okay so and proceed with the next because there are so many subjects so many topics to read this one topic it may not come in your exam at all so don't waste time really seeing some other videos because i have seen some people they open youtube they see some lecture they are not satisfied they open another lecture on youtube regarding the same topic they see that waste in this time they would have wasted one or two hours finally in that youtube they it also shows what other videos you might like they go they watch some movie song and it finally at the end of the day they are watching some philosophical thing on youtube in this time frame they would have wasted some more than 6 hours so what i would suggest is okay if you have lot of time left for your exam you are in april and your exam is in december it's okay you spend a lot of time see some lectures go to youtube search for some lectures or if you have if you are subscribed to some app or nowadays you have lot of these apps no um, you will only be knowing better this prep ladder or maro or there are so many apps nowadays so okay if you are already subscribed to that and uh, if you are watching you'd fine because you still have lot of time but during your exam whenever you are just one month Uh, left for exam or just one and a half months left for exam no point in under trying to understand what you have not understood one particular topic just remember few points if at all the question comes in the exam i'm going to write these few points proceed to the next topic because most of the times it happens any tough topic or a rare topic uh, which you think that okay it's tough i'm not able to understand that will never appear in your exam so stop worrying about that and proceed because you have lot of there are some so volatile remember. subjects yes suraj there are some yes, volatile yes. subjects okay how much are you study you won't remember like for essay in biochemistry or uh, ophthalmology ent all these are very volatile subjects okay how can you understand like uh, remember better in such things such, uh, such scenarios yeah one thing i would like to tell is uh, in medicine most of the topics are volatile not only in the uh, whatever biochemistry or other subjects even in your medicine even in your uh, whatever orthopedic many things are highly volatile so you can't help that what you can do is try to revise try to uh, as you said try to make some notes and then repeated revision or in any particular topic which you have read and which you feel you have to remember it for a long time catch hold of some of your friends and try to teach them okay so that these are some of the things wherein you can remember this volatile things for a longer time so you can make notes you can uh, make some graphical representations i was try to teach a friend i was uh, i was doing this imagining technique okay if i not understood something means i will read once okay i'll read for example uh, say cardiac cycle or the course of the radial artery radial nerve whatever such things if you can't remember study once and try to close your eyes and try to remember that once the entire course of the radial nerve maybe or the cardiac cycle the blood comes from above super superior vena cava inferior vena cava enters the right atrium then through the tricuspid valve just imagine in a, in, your, in your own way in a crazy way maybe okay yeah. what happens if you imagine once like that it becomes a stored as a story in your memory so when you sit in the exam hall that same story comes to your mind the writing it is a not a big problem for you just remembering is the problem if you just read the book it may be difficult to or uh, what a uh, uh, reciprocate in the exam but if you have made it like a story and uh, imagine that this imaginary thing will you will remember better on the exam day and you can uh, write better that's what i i was doing and uh, i think it helped many a. 
yes definitely in uh, subjects like uh, as you rightly said in anatomy or uh, in subjects where you can imagine things and then uh, try to remember that is very good in subjects sometimes like in pharmacology some side effects and all you know, i mean sometimes you will have to mug up a few things only those which are very important you try to mug up rest of the things if you are able to try to imagine and then keep it as a story definitely that will be helpful for your exam you link with some known things if you don't yeah. know something link with some known things so that you will remember better okay uh, hmm. next i uh, asked a question is fear about practicing treating patients common to all what do you say kishan no not at all not at all see as you progress in uh, life and you get that maturity that confidence level okay you can't see uh, what they do is like you told the same mistake you do they compare now sitting there they compare with us now oh suraj so he is talking so well he is so knowledgeable that's what they are comparing now what the, our position when we were in their level they don't compare that way that's the biggest problem okay you should compare with equals what we are when we are when we are in first year okay or uh, uh, we should not like uh, so when you come to that position when you complete the internship or when you complete the pg so you will get that maturity to handle anything to manage everything and uh, you can uh, practice better that time now if you imagine uh, think about practicing it, it may look very difficult but when you come to really that stage it will be very easy easy for you be confident and uh, you will be matured enough to, to manage anything that time need not worry okay and one more person has asked uh, whenever during my clinical postings i used to bunk clinicals to read for internals and uh, other theory examinations what should i have done is it correct definitely it is wrong never do that because see internals keep on coming uh, all your uh, internal exams and these keep on coming but clinics yesterday also i told you actually seeing the patients actually seeing patients with different uh, diagnosis and actually ag- examining the patients uh, seeing the clinical uh, signs in them that will help you remember for a long time and that is required finally for your clinical practice also it's okay in internals even if you score one or two marks less nobody will uh, scold you for that but attend clinics every day no matter what whether somebody teaches you or somebody doesn't teach you you attend the wards you yourself voluntarily see the patients if patients are not being admitted in your unit go to another unit nobody will prevent you from seeing going to another ward or seeing other unit patients go to another unit where uh, there are admitting lot of patients and see those cases whenever you see them and then practically demonstrate i mean you practically examine the cases yourself only then you will gain confidence only then you can answer in your final exam also so bunking clinicals is one of the very bad thing am i right kishan yeah when we go suddenly on, yeah exactly see we need to have practice all this we can't directly go on exam day and uh, expect to do all the demonstration directly on the exam day because first of all there will be thought block tension everything upon that if you have not done all those things uh, beforehand in your usual clinics or postings suddenly nobody can expect uh, to do that straight away on the exam day so this is very important uh, to attend clinics regularly and uh, as uh, suraj lightly mentioned try to take cases individually not in groups okay yes. because on exam day you will be taking in, no one will help you so uh, if you don't know the performer that's okay even patient doesn't know the performer clinical performer so whatever you know little whatever you remember go or uh, try to elicit the signs and uh, try to demonstrate the test and come back and then you look at the book okay what i have missed what i have not remember then you will remember better if you have been doing regularly like this exam day will be like any other day for you okay to you will not have this thought blocks tension and worries on the exam day because you have done all this you have been doing the regularly so you can have a very cool and composed mind during exam so we need to practice during our regular postings to do well in exams and uh, one more one more person has asked you i have got good scores in my theory exam but what actually haunts me is can i be a good practitioner can i recall all the treatment and the theory which i have read see for this question what i would like to tell you is reading your theory and doing your practice is a little different in your practice you will be doing only we will be even prescribing the medicines which are most common and very few of them what you actually read if you read 100 different drugs you will actually be prescribing only 5 to 10 drugs in your clinical practice so definitely it will not uh, come in the way. you will need not recall each and everything which you have read in your theory only the practical aspects which you require only will be uh, important in your clinical practice what do you say kishan yeah exactly and uh, 
how to be a like um, how to be a good doctor suraj i want to be a good doctor i want to be the best doctor i want to be the best surgeon how is that possible see wow. first and foremost thing yeah see uh, good question kishan everyone has this in mind so i want to be a good doctor what i should have in mind or what i should do so the first and foremost thing which you should keep in your mind is if at all you want to be a good doctor uh, the first thing is never do any harm to the patient it's okay even if you are not doing anything never harm the patient if you are a, if you are, if you are a surgeon so uh, always whenever you decide for surgery uh, you should think that okay whether this surgery is absolutely necessary or whether this method of treatment is it the standard one which everyone is following so first thing you should keep in mind is if at all the patient should not do no it, harm all, yeah do no harm do no harm is the first thing which you should have in your mind because the patient in the end should not feel okay i would have been better off if i had not taken this treatment rather than uh, having this treatment and becoming worse okay sometimes complications do happen i am not saying that complications will not happen always in especially in surgery uh, if at all a surgeon comes to you and says i never in my life have had any complication then the dictum is he has never done the surgery <laughs> yes he has never done the surgery because any practicing surgeon all of you know whoever does surgeries regularly day in and day out they always tend to have complications what is more important is to recognize the complication and treat it accordingly uh, you, should, yeah. you should be in a position to recognize what has gone wrong in my treatment what has gone wrong and try to correct it as early as possible and try to minimize the complications you cannot make it nil nobody can have nil I complications what the difference between uh, western world and ours is uh, mine uh, differentiated factor is accountability in uh, yes, india yes, we yes. don't have accountability for what we do in yes. uh, western countries they are accountable for each and everything do my principle or my formula is suraj yes hard work plus self confidence equal to sure success yes you yes, should be yes, like uh, work hard and gain as much knowledge as possible and you need to be skillful for that you need to a uh, good have a good practice things and uh, have confidence see most of time what happens is especially with girls i should not say but still they study a lot they work very hard they study so much but still they not up to the mark in the exams they not able to perform till uh, up to their expectation that's because they lack one factor called self confidence they no, don't kishan, have confidence feel, uh, in their ab ability ulta kishan, no no, no. Feel girls, i feel guys they score very well in exams in exams they uh, score over yeah, score but not also. See, they do well i agree they do well but yeah. uh, for whatever they studied they should have scored 100% but still they yes, end yes. up uh, getting 95% yes, okay yes, that's yes. because what they really lack is uh, self confidence whereas boys they hardly study anything but still they manage to pass and they score well okay when comparably that's because they have something that factor called self confidence they are very <laughs> confident about themselves yes i will do yeah. whatever it may take i will do so this is yes, a differentiating yes. factor between the uh, uh, students i don't I mean to any i don't have any gender bias as such but uh, whatever i seen that's what i'm telling so you should not just working hard you should have a confidence in you confidence in your abilities how to gain that because see in a, when we are in first year mbbs that was a toughest exam toughest year we had toughest papers we had still we managed to pass ultimately right similarly second year okay one and a half years very vast subject we had not prepared anything we didn't know anything still we able to do well and uh, manage to pass right similarly fourth year see okay so we have to gain confidence from our past achievements past success that will boost you these uh, self uh, motivation videos or uh, me or suraj motivating you all those are temporary okay it will not last longer so what's really required is self motivation and self confidence not uh, i boosting you or uh, i uh, like uh, motivating you that will not last longer you need to have a constant source of motivation and confidence that you can uh, uh, gain by uh, doing yourself kishan so, there is a saying pertaining ultimate to this formula just uh, remember and uh, okay kishan the last sentence which you told Hard motivation work, is uh, required every day there is a saying for that motivation is like uh, taking bath that is why it is recommended every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah so hard work along with that we should have confidence okay you should have self confidence then you will get success what kind of success sure success you will be you need not go behind the success if you follow these two uh, success will follow you 
that's the principle and uh, dictum as well suraj anything to add no what you said is uh, perfectly right every day you should have that motivation and the perseverance is important i have seen people one day they study for 12 to 14 hours 16 hours next day they are totally tired they read only for 2 3 hours and that is that won't help you in the end so especially for those who are preparing for neat you should have that perseverance if you are studying for 14 hours a day it's okay even uh, if you are studying for only 12 to 14 hours keep that consistently for the next uh, days months together then only you will get success it's not like you read one day uh, enormously and the next day you don't do anything just sleep the whole day that won't help you someone asking how to be motivated always what i say is uh, we should have that uh, what to say uh, uh, spirit to do be- to do better in life to do better uh, than previous day that's what will keep you motivated to better and better in la- uh, life and uh, you'll be successful eventually okay from previous day if i have done three mistakes if i read only two hours today i should read uh, more three hours and i should minimize my mistakes this kind of uh, like like uh, likeness to do better or willingness to do uh, to better this will uh, eventually take you towards success and uh, one more person has asked while taking a clinical uh, this case in clinics which is right whether to study that case before taking or uh, after taking the case i would like to tell you both do both study before take the case also after taking the case study once again that will help you what's your opinion kishan yeah uh, we should know yeah for even for theory class not just for practicals what i say is in the morning uh, just half an hour or so uh you know what are the classes scheduled for that particular day so those topics just glance once and go to class okay just glance you need not study or read anything just glance through that points and uh, what are topics and go to the class so what happens is our mind knows something and now willing to learn more so you get that interest in the class you won't get be sleepy or you don't feel disinterested in the class so you listen to the class uh, very carefully and you will be knowing now something so you get some chances to answer so you will be your confidence level get boosted so and you come back and read it again so you will be that uh, that concept will get clear and you will remember forever even for practical just like suraj told whatever uh, you are planning to take any case read about that uh, briefly and then go okay before without without preparation if you go uh, like uh, yeah you will end up doing nothing in the uh, practicals so there is a there is a saying even for examples more we sweat during practice less we bleed in the battle understood more uh, more we sweat in the practice less we bleed in the battle so that should be our principle uh, so try to practice as much as possible try to know uh, as far as possible before attempting so that would really help you in, especially to boost your confidence levels and one more thing i would like to add here uh, especially for your practical exams uh, uh, see wh- whenever you want to elicit the clinical signs for example some people say i'm not able to know whether murmur is there or not or if it is there what type of murmur is there or not see the thing is first if you are well versed with your theory knowledge if you have every day attended your clinics and seen various cases different types of cases and each and uh, elicited the clinical findings in all the cases which you have seen only then you will be able to know the clinical findings there's one more saying called the eyes cannot see and the ears cannot hear what, what the mind does not know oh, no yes yeah eyes cannot see what <laughs> mind doesn't know yes. perfect yes, yes. perfect uh, so suraj. so whether you want and to see a clinical to... finding or whether you want to hear a murmur or whatever there your mind should know what exactly it is only then you will be able to elicit that finding so there's one more saying you know you must have heard the most important part of a stethoscope it is the thing between the two <laughs> ear pieces between... <laughs> exactly exactly yeah uh, if so, only when that is thorough with the knowledge only then you will be able to know because otherwise if you blindly go no matter if you have lickman uh, cardiology 3m stethoscope even then you won't be able to hear a murmur and uh, we should have not just knowledge we should have that uh, humility and humbleness also being yes. students we should not be arrogant or uh, with knowledge we should not become arrogant or over confident also one what happened with my friend okay with my batchmate Uh, when you uh, told about murmur i remembered one of the candidate was failed in medicine exam what happened he had got a cvs case and uh, the pg had already told him there are four murmurs are there what all the murmurs they had already told him so in the exam he presented accordingly he told on auscultation sir that is esm psm uh, everything he told 
and examiner asked okay okay uh, is there any more, any other murmur he asked examiner asked okay then he straight away told to the face of the examiner no sir only these four uh, murmurs are there okay then uh, are you sure examiner asked okay no sir only these four murmurs are there he told and uh, okay okay then then uh, uh, try to look for another murmur and come after 6 months examiner told see what had really happened is there was another murmur okay there was another hemic murmur which even pg sir had missed and the examiner could pick up when he was examining so what should be done ideal in that uh, when examiner is giving a clue or he giving a hint what he could have done is either yes sir that may be but i could not appreciate i am sorry sir or else what you can do is you please i want to examine again sir and uh, try to elicit if there is any other murmur please give me another chance sir the way of better way of dealing in such situations instead of arrogantly or telling no sir okay he is trying to give you some clue and you should try to pick up or try to learn something from that instead of for straight away uh, okay into his face uh, so uh, be very humble and uh, humble uh, like uh, uh, you should have we should have that humility uh, in front of the examiners especially like uh, he was telling uh, suraj in a very very nice word by suraj respect uh, respect should be there it's always should be mutual okay and uh, try to respect the teachers and try to respect the parents rest everything will be followed okay we have high regard and respect for the teachers whatever they teach you will understand better okay and uh, see uh, if you like some topic we tend to read it more and uh, try to know more and more about it similarly when we like or when we respect some teacher okay whatever they tell uh, we tend to know more about that we study okay that's how it is suraj and i would like to add one more point to this this will actually fetch you a lot in your exam uh, not only during your exam during your entire course especially whoever pgs are there uh, if they are listening to this lecture during your entire course have utmost respect to your professors and be very humble and polite never ever develop any grudge towards any particular uh, professor because you never know who will come as your examiner uh, once it had happened to one of my close friends uh, what had happened is he was extremely intelligent he was so very intelligent that during your 3 years pg course first year you all know it is uh, even uh, kishan you know first year how hectic it is so yeah. in his first year itself he had finished studying the entire textbook all the standard textbook he had completed in first year and during the second year along with this even the recent advances recent journals everything he had completed he was so very highly intelligent that everyone had thought okay he will uh, 100% get the uh, first rank like that because he was highly intelligent but the only thing which was lacking in him was he was not humble and he was not polite or respectful to his professors so that had slowly developed into getting a grudge against the professors so sometimes he used to not attend the classes being taken by the professors even after repeatedly the professors telling why you are not attending the classes yet uh, he was his attitude was why should i attend the classes i already know everything i have read from textbooks standard textbooks advanced textbooks recent advances there is no point in attending the classes and little bit uh, arrogant towards a uh, professor so that professor had developed a grudge against that person and especially for uh, for ug also it is um, it matters but for pg it matters very much 100% yeah. during yeah. the examination he yeah. himself was the examiner and then uh, he definitely purposefully asked very tough uh, rare questions rarely asked questions and very tough questions and failed him in the examination no one could even believe that this guy could even fail in the examination because he was very intelligent but unfortunately if the professor has a deep grudge against you no one can save you even the external examiner or nobody can save you in the exam and unnecessarily he wasted 6 months of his life because because of lack of humbleness or the lack of respect so always that is very very important so you should have a uh, very much uh, respect or uh, you no know, matter if the professor is not teaching you well or he even if your professor may not know much uh, may not have much knowledge but always be humble be respectful try to learn as much possible or if at all you know something else just keep quiet listen to him you can have some discussion or anything that is that is always healthy discussion there is always no problem but uh, never develop grudges towards your professors that is the thing which, especially for pg is very important what do you say kishan yeah and ultimately uh, the concluding would be uh, failure is not when we fall it is when we fail to get back and uh, perform further okay so once if you fail or if you not able to perform up to the mark need not worry or need not take it uh, to the heart okay instead 
try to get back what uh, try to uh, like introspect what's the uh, what's gone wrong and try to correct it and uh, come up strongly okay uh, like in boxing okay it's a uh, in declared when you are uh, uh, declared like uh, you are lost when you not able to get up when you fall okay not uh, understood in boxing what happens similarly in life okay uh, so failure is not the end of the life okay so we always have the uh, chance to bounce back and come strongly so have that kind of attitude and we will definitely do well in life so any concluding remarks from uh, will uh, you know, if there are no more questions we'll uh, try to conclude this session dr suraj you have any concluding remarks for students yeah concluding remarks is uh, always see i have already repeatedly told you start preparing well in advance never think that okay i just when one month is there before the exam i will read during that time and i will pass the exam this can happen when during your school days in middle school high school okay you can when you are in some fifth standard sixth standard okay no matter your final exam just one month before start studying you can score well in your exams but not during your mbbs or definitely not during your ms so you must start preparing uh, well in advance and that will help you boost your confidence also and whenever you want to go to your exam always have an optimistic or a positive attitude when you are going to the exam so always think and uh, always you I, there are some more points always respect have respect towards your professors teachers and everyone elders everyone and uh, always have faith in god always have faith in god whenever just before going to your exam pray to god and then go and then uh, have an optimistic attitude you will definitely succeed in your exams then never be arrogant never think that you know everything or you are the supreme authority everyone else is uh, inferior to you that attitude will definitely have a negative impact on you always be humble always respect others be friendly with others no matter how much you have read or how in intelligent you are or how much uh, you have uh, acquired knowledge always have that humility always have that respect towards elders teachers parents and then this will uh, make you achieve a lot in your life not only in your exam you will come up in your life you will achieve greater greatest heights in your life you will come out with flying colors all the best to all of you and uh, one repeatedly asked question i uh, purposefully ignored that question because i had already answered that because what's next exam see it's nothing but any one different pattern that's all it's not in our uh, it, it may be neat it may be next it may be whatever it is the whatever asked is same you have read enough you know enough so whatever the pattern it doesn't matter on that day you go perform your level best and you'll be true okay so what do you say about uh, this pattern exam differing exam pattern suraj yeah it's, it's not okay. a, it's still implemented we don't know when it will be implemented and all so i know you see the thing is first of all you are yeah. not sure when it will be implemented or from when it will start so the thing is you keep on studying you acquire knowledge be thorough with your uh, uh, whatever theory knowledge whichever pattern of exam you can tackle it whether it is a mcq pattern whether it is theory pattern once you have acquired knowledge then uh, that will definitely uh, help you in sailing through any pattern of exam and one person has asked me sir any favorite quote which helps you keep going so one of my favorite quotes i would like to tell you a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step okay a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step so you might have a very uh, high ambition everyone yeah you should have a high ambition you should uh, always think of achieving the greatest heights in life but that will happen only when you start the starting single step is very crucial if you never start you will never go towards your goal so always start your uh, steps and then you'll slowly slowly sail through no matter sometimes you might be flying through cruising through to your towards your goal sometimes you might be just walking towards your goal but if not even if that is also not possible at least slowly crawl towards your goal but never stop okay never stop or be stagnant or even worse never go backwards okay so <laughs> that is the thing which is important even if you slowly crawl also it's enough but keep your goal in mind and work hard towards it and the kishan they are asking your favorite quote mine uh, yeah i am i'm very particular yeah yeah very much and uh, yeah i have my own principles okay i have my own because of which i am living today and uh, i i always believe that whatever happens it's for my good i always believe whatever happens even if i fail that's for my good even even if i die now it's for my good yeah i died in a good way talking with suraj 
instead of dying in a road a road traffic accident so whatever it may be i take it very positively i have very a positive approach in life okay and uh, another thing is i more than more, more like uh, i don't care for marks instead care for remarks i like you stressed uh, more than uh, like uh, marks i stress on my behavior my nature and uh, all those things uh, so yeah please uh, i'm only sincere request to all my dear friends is uh, don't ponder unnecessarily about things which are not in under our control or which are not in our hands okay like you are telling next exam maybe or uh, all those things those are not under our control we can't change it okay what is there in our hand is to keep uh, acquiring knowledge and to become skillful in life and uh, to do better and better in life so concentrate on only that so whatever it comes you can tackle it and you can manage better so please don't worry about anything everything will be taken care uh, just worry uh, about uh, your own studies and uh, how to be better and better any any anything else perfect perfect kishan sir i want to thank you you world white army okay thank you white army yeah why someone asked why i created white army yeah uh, <laughs> there are many factors uh, but uh, yeah i couldn't uh, study well in my during my ug days okay i had multiple things like uh, i was preparing for upsc that time and i wanted to be ias officer and i had like i was a badminton player so i was playing all over india all the time and uh, i was a like a, a big politician excellent like badminton I, player national champion kishan and i was that what is that i was a big politician in bmc you remember suraj so yes, yes, all those yes, things yes, uh, yes, even now even now I, i repent okay i should have studied better during my ug days i couldn't study uh, but i have many ideas to study and so i don't want my juniors to repent the same so to help kishan, them i started this okay one point i would okay. like to tell you kishan uh, kishan Yeah, yeah. yeah can i just add one point uh, here uh, actually one point i would like to differ in this actually what you told is perfectly correct but uh, i mean it is very good to be involved in extra curricular activities be very good at sports if you have a passion for a certain sport like even i used to play a lot of chess tournaments during my mbbs i used to go to national level i played even my international level tournaments also when i was in my mbbs during my final year i played this commonwealth in uh, singapore wherein i got my bronze medal in uh, commonwealth there so it's good if you have extra curricular activities but along with it you can study a lot it's not that you have to only study or yeah, don't was, be involved in other going, activities i was doing the same okay i was yes, doing yes, the same yes. okay. it's wonderful the same. Huh? Still, still i have that i could have done better that uh, not repentance as such but uh, i want my juniors to do better in life okay than me i always i look at my success or my happiness by others achievement okay i my principle is help others to help ourselves by helping others uh, indirectly you will be helping yourself okay uh, so i i want everyone to be better than me that's my concern so all these uh, stuff see mainly this white term is not to give you any feed with knowledge or so this is mainly everyone has knowledge in their fingertips but what's really lacking is this self confidence to boost your confidence levels we are doing all those things maybe youtube videos maybe these case presentations nothing to do with uh, Uh, giving you knowledge or testing your knowledge all these quizzes maybe we are conducting quizzes not to test not at all to test your knowledge but just to more boost your confidence levels so please make the best use of all these opportunities and uh, please be with us we are always there to help you guide you and motivate you any help any time let us know and uh, kind hearted souls like uh, suraj is also there with us so uh, nothing to worry so in life nothing to worry uh nothing to worry in life yeah we will have this uh, many requesting for these kind of sessions yeah regularly we will have these kind of sessions repeatedly and uh, nothing to worry uh, be relaxed study well okay enjoy studying and study enjoying good night uh, suresh thank you so much yes thank, thank you, you so thank much thank you so much uh, kishan and thank you it was a wonderful discussion today lot of points uh, for uh, especially ugs and even pgs also uh, regarding the exams it was a wonderful discussion i'm really happy Sir, to be in, a part uh, of white army continue even after lockdown <laughs> this white army was there 5 years ago even during lockdown and it will continue life long okay it's not a lockdown process we are doing here okay uh, this was there this will be uh, this is there this will be there forever 
okay don't worry uh, yeah this uh, yeah we are planning to even after lockdown uh, it may not be daily but weekends we are planning i suraj uh, and nishant and are planning about how to go about in the next after lockdown we will come up with a polling soon what you want what you really uh, want so we will uh, according to your poll opinions we will continue if you want we will do if you don't want uh, that's also fine okay <laughs> what do you say suraj yes yes definitely this was there white army is there since a long time it will definitely be there for a long time from now also that's what as he as you rightly said uh, may not be as frequently the sessions as in lockdown maybe a little less frequent but it will definitely be there this will continue uh, till a long time from now and it's a very good initiative we want um, like more and more participation from all of the students so it will be helpful for all of you so we'll definitely continue after that and as you said we can plan out the schedule like whichever is convenient for everybody yeah. Ishan, are you there thank you so much thank you so much yeah, yeah. thank you thanks a lot it was a wonderful session thank you we, will, we are trying to record all the sessions and uh, edit them and put it in via youtube for those yes, who missed yes, the session would, yes that should be very uh, helpful and all the ppts all the ppts will be shared in the group yeah you you can do one thing Kishan. all the ppts will, will be shared in the groups yeah and one second hello yeah 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 one more suggestion you can put the ppts in the group also also have a uh, maybe something like a google drive folder wherein all the ppts are being put in that folder and that, that we have done be available that yeah. we already have yes 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 that the mini mini library i have already created using mega app. there is a like okay. a cloud store there is a mega app wherein all our uh, previous discussions uh, question mm -hmm. previous question papers previous mm -hmm. epignosis everything available all the books many are books important for ugs and yes, uh, yes. everything many things available in our uh, mega uh, yeah, the link you can share link because of some of them were asking link, about link, that uh. link, link of which is all uh, there in the description of the each group whatsapp okay. group mm -hmm. uh, okay is in mm -hmm. that description mega link is given so you can access through that and uh, okay. download whatever you want so yes, yes. and uh, and this youtube Sorry, videos also will be helpful for all the students if uh, once uploaded to youtube okay fine yes. uh, thank you so much thank, thank you so you. much suraj yeah yeah i will pleasure being with you yeah yeah having you thank you thank you thanks a lot my pleasure thank you